Yesterday we started solving radical equations and we're going to continue with solving radical equations today but we're going to solve some complex radical equations. Now we did have radical equations that had two radicals in them yesterday but that was the only thing they had was two radicals. They didn't also have a number. So these particular types of equations are quite a bit more complex. They take quite a few more steps to actually solve. Now, what they've done here on the first page is they've started to solve this radical equation. They looked at this and said, okay, well, I'm going to move radical a plus 1 to the right side. I'm going to get one of the radicals by itself. And that gave us 3 plus radical a plus 1. And then they said, well, if I'm going to get rid of the radicals, I need to square both sides. So when you square the left side, it does leave you with 3a plus 4. But when you square the right side, it does not leave you with 9 plus a plus 1. This is a binomial. It means you need to multiply that binomial by itself again. So what it wants us to now do is it wants us to actually solve this correctly. So we are in fact going to start with the second step that they had in their work, which was they moved the a plus radical a plus 1 over to the right side and that gave them 3 plus radical a plus 1. Now once you isolate one of the radicals then you're going to square both sides. And if you square radical 3a plus 4 it gives you 3a plus 4 and this gives us 3 plus radical a plus 1 times 3 plus radical a plus 1. This is probably the biggest mistake that people make is they forget that when you have a binomial it means multiply the binomial by itself. So when we actually do this we have to go 3 times 3 which is 9, 3 times radical a plus 1 which is 3 root a plus 1. Then root a plus 1 times 3 is 3 root a plus 1 and a radical times itself just leaves you with the radicand, that a plus 1. So now if we look at things here on the right hand side, we've got 9 plus 1 which gives us 10. We have an a and 3 root a plus 1 plus 3 root a plus 1 is 6 root a plus 1. So now we've only got one radical left in this situation. So what we're going to do is we're going to move everything except this radical over to the left side. So we're going to subtract 10 and we're going to subtract a. Well 3a minus a gives us 2a and 4 minus 10 gives us negative 6. And we still have 2a minus 6 on the left side and 6 root a plus 1 on the right side. So how do we get rid of a radical? We square both sides. This is a binomial. This means 2 minus 2a minus 6 times 2a minus 6. When you square this, this is 6 times root a plus 1. So you square the 6 and you square the radical. Well, 6 squared is 36. When you square the radical a plus 1, you're left with a plus 1. But you have to put the a plus 1 in brackets because we're going to have to multiply that 36 by everything that's in the brackets here. Now we're going to expand this. 2a times 2a is 4a squared. 2a times negative 6 is negative 12a. Negative 6 times 2a is negative 12a. And negative 6 times negative 6 is positive 36. If we expand this, 36 times a is 36a and 36 times 1 is 36. So if we now look at this, we're going to move everything over to the left hand side. We're going to form a quadratic. We have no a squareds except for the 4a squared, so we're going to copy that down. Negative 12 and negative 12 is negative 24, and we're going to subtract 36a. So when you do that, negative 24 minus 36 is going to give us negative 60a. And if you take 36 away from 36, they cancel out. So you have 4a squared minus 60a equals 0. So now we need to factor. The first thing we always try to do is take out a common factor. In this case, we can take out a common factor of 4a. And we're left with a minus 
15 equals 0. Now remember to solve for a, you equate each of these to 0. And you solve for a here, you divide by 4, and you get a to be 0, and you add 15, and you get a to be 15. Now, we are not finished. You always have to check these roots in the original question. So the original question was the square root of 3a plus 4 minus the square root of a plus 1 equals 3. So we're going to first of all check our first root. We're going to check where a is 0. So that's 3 times 0 plus 4 minus 0 plus 1 equals 3. Well, 3 times 0 is 0. 0 plus 4 is 4, and the square root of 4 gives us 2. Here we have 1, and the square root of 1 is 1, but 2 minus 1 does not equal 3. So that tells us a equals 0 is not one of our solutions. So now we also are going to check our second solution, where a is 15. When we do this, we get 3 times 15 plus 4 minus 15 plus 1 equals 3. Well, 3 times 15 is 45. 45 plus 4 is 49. 15 and 1 is 16. Square root of 49 is 7. Square root of 16 is 4. And yes, 7 minus 4 is 3, so A equals 15 is one of our solutions. So remember, you have to check your solutions. Yes, Mr. Kaminsky is a sadistic individual. He's going to give you questions like this on your exam, where if you don't check your solution, you're not going to get full marks because you're going to say both of these answers work when they really don't. If we go back to this question before we move on, the process of solving a complex radical equation is first, isolate one of the radicals and square both sides. Then you isolate the, the remaining radical and square both sides, and then you solve for your variable. So, let's take a look at a question where we have to set up the radical equation, and then we're actually going to go through and we're going to solve it. The question says when the square root of 2 less than a number, so the square root of 2 less than a number is subtracted from the square root of 5 more than twice a number, so twice a number and 5 more, the result is 3. So we have to read the words. 2 less than a number means a number minus 2. 5 more means add 5 to twice a number means multiply that number by 2. Subtracted from means that this initial thing is taken away from the original. So if we look at this situation, we have to do similar to what we did in the last example. We're going to add root x minus 2 to the other side. And we're going to get 2x plus 5 equals 3 plus the root of x minus 2. So now we have one of our radicals isolated, this radical on the left hand side. So we're going to square both sides. When we square this radical on the left side, we're left with 2x plus 5. Remember, this is a binomial, so we are going to have to multiply that binomial by itself. So when we do this, we're going to get 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times root x minus 2 is 3 root x minus 2. We're going to get 3 root x minus 2, and when we multiply the radical by itself, we just get x minus 2. If we isolate or simplify on the right side, 9 minus 2 is going to give me 7. I have a single x. And if I look at these radicals, I have 6 root x minus 2. So now I'm going to isolate the 6 root x minus 2 on the right side. I'm going to subtract 7 and subtract x. Well, 2x minus x is going to leave me with x. 5 minus 7 is going to leave me with negative 2. 
So now I have this radical on the right hand side all by itself. It's isolated. So now what we have to do is we have to square both sides again. So this gives me x minus 2 times x minus 2. When you square the 6, you get 36. When you square the radical, you get x minus 2. But remember, we're going to have to multiply those things together in a second. When we expand this, we get x squared minus 2x minus 2x plus 4. 36 times x is 36x, and 36 times negative 2 is negative 72. So if I move everything over to the left-hand side, negative 2 and negative 2 is negative 4, and if I subtract 36 and negative 4, I get negative 40x. I'm going to add 72 to 4, which is going to give me 76. So now I've got a quadratic that I need to factor. I need two numbers that multiply to 76 and add to negative 40. I could let you wrestle with that, but in fact, those two numbers are negative 32 and negative, or sorry, negative 2 and negative 38. And when we solve these, when we equate them each to 0, we get x to be 2 and we get x to be 38. And if you stop there, you haven't finished the problem. You have to do your check. You have to see, do these work in the original equation? So our original equation is the square root of 2x two, two plus 5 minus the square root of x minus 2 equals 3. If we make x 2, this is going to give us 2 times 2 plus 5 minus 2 minus 2 equals 3. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 plus 5 is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. 2 minus 2 is 0, and 3 minus 0 is indeed 3, so that checks out. We're going to do the same thing with 38. We're going to get 2 times 38 plus 5 minus 38 minus 2 equals 3. If you go 2 times 38 plus 5, you're going to get 81. 38 minus 2 is 36. Square root of 81 is 9, square root of 36 is 6, and yes, 9 minus 6 is 3. So in this particular question, yes, both solutions work. This is the hardest kind of radical equation you're going to have to do, is one where you have to do this much work and you have to remove a radical twice. So you won't get anything harder than this.